Welcome to the Godrich Water Treatment Plant. If you've ever driven down to the beach in Godrich, this building here, you've probably seen it, is the Godrich Water Treatment Plant, where we draw water from Lake Huron to provide to Godrich. Intake for the Godrich Water Treatment Plant is out in Lake Huron. It's approximately 500 meters behind me. It's approximately seven meters deep out by the break walls. Right in the middle, some people have sometimes seen the inspection port. The inspection port is an access to the uh, water pipe that brings the water in. So the intake inspection port uh, is not visible anymore. Uh, we're dealing with very, very high lake levels right now. At the intake itself is a crib uh, where the water comes in, uh, some bars and screens, so uh, a lot of large debris cannot enter the pipe and plug it. We aren't able to put it out in the lake further because of in the shipping zone. So the shipping lanes uh, would stir it up so they in the past had set this uh, intake for the plant very close to the shoreline. So that is another reason this water has to be protected. The intake protection zone is behind me and around the port. It's very important that people and uh, residents, uh, visitors all know that the intake protection zone is essential because we draw our water from this area. The Maitland River uh, does come out right behind us into this lake. Uh, we get a lot of turbid water, cloudy water, uh, stirred up water from storms, rains, events like that. Lake Huron is the third largest freshwater lake in the world. There are many, many storms with the, uh, the way this lake is and the way the wind and the uh, weather come across the lake. Massive waves, uh, and especially with the high levels that we have now, uh, the storm surges cause turbid water. This is the SCADA that we use to operate the water treatment plant in Godrich. Basically it tells you the story from the water entering the plant, how it's going through the plant, and right up until when it leaves the plant, goes over to the tower and flows over to the booster station. As the water comes into the water treatment plant, it monitors things like turbidity, it monitors the pH, the temperature of the water, it also shows things like dosage rates that we use on our stir pack, on our fluoride, and on our chlorine. As it comes in through the water treatment plant, the water is fed stir pack, then it is fed chlorine, and it runs through a flask mixer and then through settling beds, which gives the time gives the stir pack time to adjust, and then drops into the filters where it is treated with chlorine and fluoride. At that point. We check the chlorine levels of it. We check the uh, turbidities of the water at that point on both filters and before it drops into the clear well. At that point, the plant automatically redoses the uh, chlorine in the water to make sure we have it at uh, a set point between 1.2 and 1.3 going into the distribution system. Eight hour process between water coming into the water treatment plant and water leaving the water treatment plant. Behind me is the traveling screen. The traveling screen encompasses a large conveyor belt of screening that goes 30 feet down that brings all debris, uh, twigs, grasses, anything like that that gets brought in through the intake pipe and is removed before it goes to the raw water well. We have three low lift pumps that bring raw water through the treatment plant process. Uh, each one can work in tandem or on its own. The water that we can produce through the plant is anywhere from 60 liters a second up to about 125 liters a second. Uh, this brings water into the process just before the initial addition of any chemical. Once the water has uh, been brought in through the traveling screen, it is brought up through the plant where we add chemicals. 
Polyaluminum chloride is what we use to coagulate the water to ensure the particles uh, come together and form a flock and so we can drop them out in the settling process. Uh, once that happens, it goes into a fluctuating tank. Fluctuators cause the water to slowly move and mix and allowing coagulation of the particles that will then, through the settling tank, help the particles drop to the bottom where they're removed and the clear water over the top flows onto the filters. At the filters we add a couple chemicals to help with the treatment process to ensure the disinfection process. Uh, chlorine is added and fluoride is added. Uh, we add fluoride because the health unit in this region would like fluoride in the system to help promote healthy teeth. Uh, the chlorine is our disinfection. Uh, chlorine uh, is added through uh, ports before the filter to kill any bugs, viruses, bacteria that uh, are present in the water. Once it goes through the filters, it drops into the clear well. The clear well is a large body of water underground that helps the contact time concentration of the chlorine and the water create a good and chlorine residual to ensure safe drinking water before it hits the users. These are the holding ponds. This is uh, where the water goes after it has been backwashed through the filters, cleaning the filters. Uh, a lot of the debris, basically sand, uh, is kept here. The water uh, drains through the clay bed uh, over time. So these are holding ponds. We are in the lab at the water treatment plant in Godridge. In Godridge, the water treatment plant can run a range from basically two to gridity all the way up into 110, 130, 140, um, depending on what kind of weather we have coming at the uh, lake bank at that particular time. So on each given day, we're, we take we do chlorine tests, we do turbidity tests, we do fluoride tests, and we do alkalinity testing on the water. The treated water that leaves the water treatment plant on a daily basis. All right, on a daily basis, you're going to get your raw water coming in from the lake and it can look a lot more like this. Uh, once uh, the treatment uh, has been done from uh, down at the beach at the water treatment plant, uh, the water is sent to uh, the booster station, which is behind me. 5,000 cubic meters of water can be stored in here. And the Godrich water tower uh, holds 1,000 cubic meters of water for storage and also helps to uh, maintain pressure in the town of Godridge. Behind me on this, underneath this hill is the reservoir and there is 5,000 cubic meters of water. Uh, all of it uh, can't be used at one time, we have to keep some water in uh, the reservoir at all times, but basically the town of Godridge can use anywhere from uh, 2,000 cubic meters uh, to over 10,000 cubic meters of water in a day. Uh, that's what, why it's very important to ensure that uh, you know, we're being mindful of uh, using water. Co water conservation, uh, the higher capacities uh, of water used in a day are in the summer and uh, unfortunately a lot of that goes to lawn watering. Uh, so uh, it, it is important to be mindful of water use at all, at all time because there's a limited amount of fresh water for our drinking purposes. Water conservation should be on everyone's minds at all times. Hopefully you have enjoyed the uh, tours and the information we've provided, but if there's more information uh, needed from uh, this or any other events from Source Water Protection, please visit our website, sourcewaterinfo.om.ca.